Bing bang. Skirt. Which one you want? You know which one. <laughs> bang! We're bite. Welcome back to the studio. Animal. Tony, no dimes. Nicholas, week nine. Animal, what do we got on the on the slate today? So real quick, we're going to give you the, the big buy, mega buy week. A lot of teams on buy this week. And then uh, we got you know, a couple of players were traded to some teams that are a little fancy relevant. They may even hurt a player or two that you actually already own. And then um, we're just going to do some, like, you know, start sits on the fence. So, like, guys that you may be on the fence about this week, you're not sure if you should put them in your lineup. We're going to tell you if you should or you shouldn't. Browns, Cowboys, Broncos, Giants, Steelers, 49ers. Big, big. Bye week. I said mega bye week. I think I have to players. start like in the E Town get down. This is a 10 team league, and I'm pretty sure my flex plays are Devin Duvernay and DeAndre Carter. Like it's it's bad. Out DeAndre here. Carter on the fence. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it, I'm, he's clearly a starter. <laughs> same, same with Duvernay. He's a guy I want in my line. Well, I have like Andrews, I have uh, I had Mike Williams, and I'm going against Snacks, who has I think Keenan Allen, who hopefully doesn't play. But yeah, things are things are ugly out here between the amount of injuries to the wide receiver position and the bye weeks. A lot of a uh, lot of players on the fence say fence better have a fucking strong foundation if it wants everybody to sit on it. That That's fence getting broken, collapse, big right. collapse energy. Some trades. We had Jeff Wilson go to the Miami Dolphins. Love it. Do you actually love it for Jeff Wilson or do you hate it for Raheem Mostert? I guess I guess both. My love for Jeff Wilson definitely outweighs my hate for Raheem Mostert. Your love for Jeff Wilson knows no bounds. It really doesn't. And I'm I'm it's glad poetic. because obviously if you you know, once you get Christian McCaffrey in the building, like he takes over pretty much all snaps, carries, receptions for the running back position. Jeff Wilson, you're just not you're not him. You're not CMC. But you are still a really good running back in your own. And I think he is going to take over as the bell not like the bell cow, but at least like the one A in the Miami Dolphins offense. You think he just steps in as the one A? Not at all. Yes, dude. It's the Mike. It's it's the same offense. Like this isn't a whole new scheme that he has to figure out. Like this was a great fit. He couldn't have gone to a better situation. Like Miami needs Jeff Wilson because they they were trying to fill the Chase Edmonds role by giving Chase Edmonds the bag, but Chase Edmonds fucking stinks. Jeff Wilson can catch passes. He can be the goal line back. He can run between the tackles on the outside. He already knows so like that's, it's going to be beautiful. That's crazy to think he just steps in as the one A. Yeah, I don't Why? starting like next week. If I had to choose who had more fantasy points rest of season, Wilson or Moser, I'd probably lean Wilson. But I, I don't. There's no way that he just steps in and they're like, "You're the starter now." After what Moser's done this year, I'm still taking Moser. Rest of season, yeah. So if you're no, a, not rest of season, Moser has like one week max so where he's still like the guy and the guy you want between the two. So you're telling me if you were a Moser owner and this, you just found out you know about Jeff Wilson. You would rather like, tra- have yes. Jeff Wilson than your Mostert that yes. you already have. I think I would, too. I, I really? wouldn't necessarily make that trade because I think in most mm-hmm. leagues, like that's just not the price you would sell Mostert for. Why you not? Know? If the guy that's going to take his job is, you might right, as well trade but for like, him. But I, you could probably get like a Wilson and a Duvernay. Or right, something. exactly. You can exactly. get, like get a twofer because Mostert's actually been kind of nice. Yeah. Right. Okay, so you mentioned this guy. Chase Edmonds went to the Broncos. I think this is basically irrelevant. We don't even really need to talk and about it. I cut that. All right, cool. Chase Claypool, though, on the other hand, goes to the Bears. I'm liking this a little bit more. The more I think about it, the more I think I like this. Fields has, like, low-key been... Maybe it's just relative to all the entire QB class that he came in with, and they're all playing just horrifically. He's He's been good the last month. And I feel like we'll see some, like, four for 75 in a touchdown game out of Claypool. He's, it's similar to the Steelers situation, but just, like, less good weapons around him. I think he gets the same opportunities, but just gets to show off a little bit more consistently. Yeah, so immediate reaction, I hated it. I didn't think it did anything. And then I really I sat down, I thought about it, I looked at it. And, you know, I don't think Fields has actually had a legitimate... Big brains. I don't think Fields has had a legitimate wide receiver, too, to actually throw to. So this could actually... Like you said, he's not been playing bad. When he can actually has a little time and he you know makes a, a little extra time with his legs and escapes the pocket, he looks pretty good out there. So having an extra body to throw to that could actually maybe catch the ball and make a play, I think it could Fields be Fields has a him. nice deep ball, too. He just doesn't get, like... You're not going to throw five foot ten Darnell Mooney just deep balls over and over and over again, you know. So it's it's nice to just have a guy that you're like, I don't know if he's going to fucking catch it, but he's taller than the guy next yeah, to him. He's, so got, he's got, got a better, better shot chance. than Mooney. Yeah, and they're trying to use guys like Vilas Jones and Dante Pettis. Like this, I'm is pretty sure Claypool is younger upgrade. than. Vila Jones a rookie. I think Claypool is younger than him. <laughs> he, I'm might not even he came in the league at 25 years old. Yeah. So old. Like, what a horrible. It's graphic. an upgrade to Justin Fields for sure. And I, I, it has to be a better spot for Claypool. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I, I've, I've come around to it. 
All right, last guy that got traded that's actually relevant. TJ Hawkinson to the Vikings. I feel the same as the way it broke. I, th- I think it's a super lateral move for fantasy. I don't think it goes up or down. I think it helps Kirk Cousins having like a nice secure red zone target, yeah. someone that he could dump the ball off to if he needs to. But I, th- I think it's also like Thielen's been – he's showing his age this year. Like Thielen has completely kind of dropped off in terms of any sort of weekly ceiling. So, yeah, well, I, I, I think just Kirk Cousins. That's what I was going to say. I think this could actually – you know, we could see TJ Hawkins maybe get some of those goal line uh, red zone targets that we were used to Adam Thielen getting because Adam Thielen just – like you said, he just looks – Father Time's caught up to him. I can see Hockey uh, grabbing a, a handful of touchdowns over, you know, the next eight weeks. Having a bunch whatever. of 30-yard games with, like, a touchdown every yeah. once in a while. Yeah. It also felt like the Vikings were trying to use Irv Smith a lot in the red zone. Yeah. So he'll just – obviously take over that spot I actually think this is really good for Hawkinson I think it'll inject him with a little more consistency throughout his career because we've seen like the upside probably a better him, floor probably a better right floor better really floor good. um you know I, there there are a lot of weapons in Minnesota but there was a lot of weapons in Detroit too and he was kind of taking a backseat to them so it I feel like it makes no sense for the Lions in a like real football move but Weird. Fantasy wise, I like it. Yeah, dead Irv Smith and Dynasty. Sad. All right, so those are basically all the relevant trade guys. Let's head over to the fence, and uh, <laughs> we're not gonna. Well, yeah, let's get on it, and then we'll figure out what let's we're climb gonna in do. and see if let's we're gonna jump fence. off of it. All right, we're gonna go game by game here. We're gonna go we'll start with the Bills at the Jets. Zach Wilson, the quarterback position here. Uh, Zach Wilson, like he's he can he's got nubs for arms. He's not climbing up the fence. I mean, you gonna like, you got start or sit him here? Yeah, no, sit. I mean, in a one quarterback league, there's no chance you're starting them. Sure. Obviously, in a super flex, you might be a little more pinched. You may not have other options That's like me. That's what I ask, though. Are there like maybe a wide receiver? Obviously, bye weeks are tough, but are there wide receivers maybe you would rather start over yeah, I would, as a quarterback? On, if you got a deep team, I would actually consider it. Give me some options there because I'm actually thinking. Here's, here's what happens in games like this often, especially if they do like Zach Wilson. So they're 12.5-point favorites right now. And you might say, oh, that's going to be a lot of garbage time. That also leads to a wildly predictable offense for the second half where you're dropping back every time. That also means they could just put pressure on him every single time. Interceptions, strip sacks, things like that. Like that's where Zach Wilson falls apart when he's under pressure. And I just this could be like a nine point game for Zach Wilson. So what if what if your team is loaded at wide receivers? Yeah, in a super a flex, guys. and you're deciding between, like, DJ Moore as your, like, man, I don't know, I wide receiver four or something. I would or start more too. He's playing against Cincy, and Cincy just lost their top cornerback. I, I, I would, oh God, as ugly as it is, I think I'd play more over Zach Wilson, even in super flex. Yeah, I was going to go with a guy that you mentioned earlier, like Devin DuVernay. That, uh, I, that I wouldn't nah. do. Okay, what about Allen Robinson? No. No. Like, it would need Wilson to be a top be the, 20 right, wide Zach receiver. Zach Wilson okay. being the quarterback still has the floor. Really? I think the Bills are just going to shellack them, and he's not going to get anything done. He, 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 I, he could get, like, benched by the right. third quarter. He could, and I think there's a chance Jets just get shut out, but and Zach Wilson two, at two to three But picks. those other guys have a floor of like two to three points, right. yeah, I think. Zach Wilson so. sure. still has a floor. Of I need someone who's They have higher six. ceilings, I think, though, on that week, though. Yeah, if you maybe. go look at the week. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on. Michael Carter, James Robinson. I'll give Carter a second chance. I, I think, like, the offensive line being banged up is kind of just – killed this offense he, this is a game where michael carter might catch eight, eight balls okay so I'm, I'm i would give him another flex chance this week i'm probably not playing mark michael carter i'm gonna try to find another option i he's probably like a mid rb3 like shitty in flex in play. a 16 bye week though like he's a flex play james robinson no chance he touches my lineup I got uh, one. except do, except if like, you're in the e-town get down and you're forced to start him we're he's not a, he's, to he's that a, he's game yet but michael carter or khalil herbert who's been playing very well but herbert, still a backup herbert. all right herbert I agree. Herbie. It's it's like one of those weird ones where it's hard to say, but I think Herbert's eventually going to have to, he's going to keep getting more and more work. So if you don't, this is like the time where if you don't start Herbert, it's like, you're just going to look back in three weeks and being like, fuck, he just ripped off the four good games that I should have been starting. Yeah, exactly. For. Okay. The wide receivers for the Jets, Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, like, no, right? Nah, it's not happening. Wilson, I don't think I'm starting. Wilson's coming Jets. off a big game. If Corey Davis misses again, I put, uh, Wilson's a good flex play, I think. Okay. Usable. Elijah Moore, no way though. Um, now, obviously, you're going to start these guys, but the real question is, for the Bills by receivers, I just want to bring up Isaiah McKenzie. How do we feel about Isaiah McKenzie this week? Obviously, Davis and Diggs, you, 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 have, no, you have to start them. Even if Sauce Gardner, it doesn't matter. You have to start them, right? The, you, big, the, like you're going to start Diggs. You're going to start Davis. Yeah. Diggs, Davis, you start. McKenzie, I, I, no way. Really? I think McKenzie is the start for the Bills this week because he's going to be in the slot, not getting the shadow. I don't know, dude. The problem with McKenzie, it feels similar to last year where it was like we were trying to figure out if it was Cole Beasley or Sanders, and every week it was flip-flopping. So it's like him, Shakir, Dawson Knox. So McKenzie feels like his floor is too low for me. Yeah, I'm probably out on McKenzie. There's got to be better options. I'm big in on McKenzie this week, everyone, (laughs) so you know. All right, moving on. Chargers at Falcons. Nick, going to have to lean on you for this one. 
Let's do it. Marcus Mariota. Yeah, I'll, he, I'll play a lot of teams against uh, a lot of positions and players against the Chargers. I, their team is is not not playing great. If I if I still see him running the ball, I'm happy with it. So mm-hmm. I, I think he's a Mark decent Mariota. stream option. Yeah, that one wasn't really so much. This is where it gets. I think tricky. I got him as my. Let me see the rankings for him. I got him as QB 13. So he's not like okay. for sure starter QB one leagues, but super flex for sure. Super flex for sure. Yeah, mostly he's obviously the quarterbacks mainly for QB one leagues. Mm-hmm. Okay, the running backs here is where it gets tricky because Cordero Patterson's supposed to be coming back. Tyler Algier is there. Who? What do you do? I don't trust any of the running backs just because we don't know the health of Cordy P. Like, if he's healthy, I, I feel like he could be taking all the work or there's a chance he, like, suits up and doesn't even play. I'm nervous about him. Th- this, there's been, like, optimistic positive reports, but typically a guy coming back from, like, a four- to five-week injury doesn't just get, you know, 20 touches. He's also a guy that wasn't getting 20 touches before, was he? No, he wasn't. He wasn't, like, in the workhorse role. If he misses time, though, I actually do really like Caleb Huntley. He's coming off, like, a really big game, 16 carries, I think, like, 90-something yards, and the Chargers run defense is kind of putrid. He's got so, that nice burst, too. He breaks away for, for some nice big Yeah, I like Hunt- Huntley as a sneaky flex play if Patterson misses. If Patterson plays, I don't know if there's a way I could play any of those guys confidently. The receiving core in Atlanta is driving me crazy between Drake London and Kyle Pitts. Pitts, I think you play for sure. I feel like you week. have to at this point because it's the tight end position and it is a scarce. Like, there's not a lot of guys there. Obviously, you have to play Pitts. I just hate him. It's a bias. I'm going to bring it up. because I Drake London, though. Drake mm. London is where it gets tricky because you, you want to start him, but he's just not giving you startable games. No. Nah. So London, as crazy as this is, going through the rankings, like London is in a tier with like on the flip side, DeAndre Carter, Matt Collins, like Khalif Raymond in Detroit. But he's also my wide receiver 34. That's pretty fucking high. Yeah. You know, so it's like he's a guy that will find his way into a lineup or two of mine because of this necessity. Of yeah. He's not like an auto fade for me. All right. But so I, it's I think a, I would it's rather a, if you take... absolutely need it, you start him basically. Yeah. I would. Probably rather take the guys you mentioned before, like Duvernay. I think Duvernay ceiling is way higher than, than Drake London. Yeah, I have Duvernay ranked way higher than London. Oh, okay. He wasn't in that tier. <laughs> Sounds gross. Oh. Don't fucking make problems that we All didn't right, have. Keenan Allen, obviously. I mean, it's not actually obviously. If he plays that, do you even feel comfortable starting him, I guess? Because I don't believe him anymore. Like, is he hurt or not? I mean, the fact that he came out and was like, I'm not, I didn't, I couldn't practice, got worse over the bye week. I don't think he's playing. I don't think he's going to play. Okay. I'm if, just he saying, do, if he does, if he does we'll know the full report. I'm yet. probably going to play him. Because really? Mike Williams is out, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, it's, yeah. I don't trust him. I don't either, but who the fuck are, <laughs> can you trust in this offense? Josh Palmer Besides and DeAndre Eckler. Carter, no. baby. Absolutely not. I, I like, I'm like. i fine with both of them if Allen and Mike Williams miss. Which one do you like more? Straight up, I'll probably take Palmer just because we've seen him have a more consistent role, and he's like more of an outside guy, which matches up with Herbert. But I'll, I'll definitely play DeAndre Carter if both of those guys miss. Yeah, I Keep, love Gerald Everett's side note. Yeah, yeah. He should be nice. Keenan Allen's giving me all types of bad vibes. I feel like he's not going to play again this season. Yeah, if he comes out Saturday and says, I feel great, I'm playing, I'm not playing him. Still. Yeah, the reports after the bye week, very, very sus, yeah. yeah I wouldn't be surprised to, if this is going to be a three, four-week more injury. Yeah, he was supposed to be back, like, after one week. Now, here we are two and a half months later, some bullshit. Him and, he's, him and Mike, Michael Thomas are just driving me crazy right now. Same I don't player. even own any Michael <laughs> yeah. Thomas, but, like, it's the same thing every year now, Michael Thomas. Panthers at Bengals. P.J. Walker. Stud. I know you love him. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a joke at this point. Like, yeah. I, I just kind of thought he would have a good game against the Falcons last week, which I guess for fantasy he technically did because he connected on, like, a couple deep passes late in the game. But I'm not I'm not starting P.J. Walker. Superflex League? Uh, it, I mean, look, he can get desperate there. We were talking about Zach Wilson. Yeah, I'd probably play P.J. Walker over Zach Wilson. P.J. But- Walker, Romeo Dobbs. PJ Walker. I'll I'll play the QB there. I think. <laughs> yeah, but PJ Although Walker doesn't. The lines, I know. I was gonna say like Romeo Dobbs could have a huge game, but um, he's not getting in my lineup. Yeah, no chance. Alec Pierce or PJ Walker. 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 Yeah, for sure. Only because of Sam Ellinger. All right. Also, there might be zero points scored in that Indy New England game. PJ Walker's got to throw to somebody. DJ Moore. We said we were gonna start. No problem. Terrace Marshall. Nope. Not I, even with the bye weeks? Nope. He's worth an ad, but not a start. Nine targets last week. Yeah, that was like the first game in his NF, in his like 20-year NFL career he did anything. It did look like they were trying to feed him the ball, though. I'm saying. Like, they were definitely trying to make him it part of It almost seems offense. like they're trying to get ready to get him primed so they can trade DJ Moore. I just, I just want everyone to understand again, though, that this was... It, Atlanta's pass defense has been putrid for like five years running, and they've been good up to this point in the year, but... Casey Hayward out, AJ Terrell out. Our starting safety was did not play last week either. Like excuses, our entire secondary excuses. excuses. No, 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 no. This is not excuses. I'm telling you, like, stop getting high on Carolina. Like I'm the not. only reason they looked good last week is because we were terrible. High on Terrace Marshall. I just want him to be a thing. I believed right. in him since the draft, and I. So when, when Terrace Marshall goes one for twelve next week, PJ Walker throws for 162 yards. 
I believe you that that will happen. All yeah, right, so no, we're out. Terrace Marshall not on self defense. Got it. I'll live with it. Deonta Foreman, I think we're all comfortable starting him. He's been oh, an yeah. absolute stud. Love him. Yeah. No, no problem. Deonta Foreman. All right, next game. The Colts at the Patriots. We got a couple of interesting ones this here. Is easy. Bench everybody. <laughs> Starting with uh, the quarterbacks. Let's go with both of them for both teams. Sam yeah. Ellinger and nope. Mac Jones. Nope. This is going to be a seven to three game. Could go either way. <laughs> it it could be very gross. The thing is, Mac Jones did not look good against the Jets. He got saved on that pick six that got called back, and then it's tough. Like I I don't feel like they're going to put Bailey Zappi in there, but I know. wouldn't be surprised if Ellinger had a better game this week than he did last week. I think he had a bunch of runs called back on penalties and stuff. Mm-hmm. He didn't look good he doesn't look like a great NFL quarterback but he'll be a little I mean both of them are like bottom six options this week like overall I also think the Colts defense matches up pretty well with the Patriots they haven't been that bad this year and of course on the flip side you got Belichick versus a rookie quarterback that never goes well so remember how electric Colts Patriots games used to be like with like Andrew Luck Tom Brady but like Brady Manning like those games were like the Sunday I know I don't know if you're old enough to (laughs) remember those games but those never saw those every every year anytime those two teams played it would just be like Sunday Night Football Monday Night Football just the crazy these fucking matchups and this might this feels like the literal opposite yeah. of what those matchups are this is bad i think I, I think there's three players you could start i think it's ramondre i think it's jacoby myers and uh i guess Pittman taylor are both startable yeah you have to start him but yeah so i was gonna say I, taylor's I gonna... the one that we have to worry about just because like if he does play i'm still worried that he's gonna be too banged up and they're just not gonna like if the game's a disaster, they're gonna just like you know give it to Deion Jackson. So he didn't bucket. practice yesterday. We're yeah. filming this on Thursday. He didn't practice on Wednesday. We don't have the reports for today yet. Yeah, I mean if Taylor misses, you definitely start Deion Jackson as like a top twenty option. For oh, sure. love Deion Jackson. Yeah, and do you like him with even if Taylor plays? No. Uh, yeah, I think I do because Sam Ellinger is not gonna throw. Like they're gonna have to run the ball. Like they're gonna run the ball. A lot. They're gonna lean on the run. But like if you like Jackson, I feel like it's more for the pass catching role, not for. The for him taking carries yeah, away Yeah, when I Taylor. say run, I mean, yeah, sure. Get them Screen involved. passes is the same shit to me. Uh, I'm pretty sure Taylor missed practice today. This was Today, too? Two hours ago. Love yeah. that. So it's, it's leaning towards Deion Jackson. So, yeah, he re-injures the ankle. So, yeah, it, Deion Jackson's for sure a star. I think Michael Pittman, we talked about it last week. Oh, I, I just thought he was going to get a ton of targets from Ellinger. It wouldn't be efficient, but I think he's, you know, uh, a low-end wide receiver, too, for right now. What about the Patriots wide receivers? I know they're all very... Jacoby's been nice. Yeah, Jacoby's actually Jacoby been and really Devontae good. Parker eventually, you know, he has his I weird games. I think he games. got hurt, maybe. Did he? Maybe. Is it going to be a Tyquan Thornton week then? No. No. It's yeah. like Jacoby Myers or no one. Yeah. So, Jacoby Myers, though? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. That. Again, he's kind of, he's like Pittman, like Taylor, if Taylor plays. Like, you have to start him, but you're going to regret starting him. Oh, but yeah. you got to do it. He scored in three or four matchups. He's, like, starting to get into the end zone a little bit, which is, you know, a very fucking unlike him. He, he's been, like, quietly kind of nice this year, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He has these games. He gets a ton of targets. Just, you know, I can't figure out the Patriots is the problem. I'm going to look up on Twitter. I saw something about Jacoby Myers in the last month. He's, like, a wide receiver one or something. Yeah, some here's shit last, like that. last four games. Actually, last five games. Nine for 95. Seven for 111 and a touchdown. Four for 60. Two for 34 and a touchdown. Last week, nine for 16 and a touchdown. Yeah, he's he's been really good, yeah. Oh, PPR, yeah. he's fire. Yeah. Wide receiver 13 in PPR, points per game. I guess that's the whole fucking season. Overall, yeah. 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 Not surprised. Because even the first two games were in, like, four for 55 was, like, his worst game. It was the first game. He's getting a ton of targets. Yeah. That's why I was hoping Deontay Johnson, you know, all those targets would eventually translate into points, and it's just not happening yet. Nope. Yeah, Jacoby's a star for sure. Cool. All right. Raiders at Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, biggest bust in recent NFL history. Did you see someone on Twitter, some blue check mark, like redrafted the quarterbacks in that class? And they basically gave him a grade in terms of like where in the draft they take them, you know, top 10 picks, middle first, second, whatever. And they ranked it, I think it was um, Justin Fields, top 10, Davis Mills, top 10, Trevor Lawrence, middle to late first round well i, I would not that's egregious that's just it was that's crazy cl- that's clickbait it, yeah. i mean the dude was serious about it for sure but but if you're redrafting today just side question like i still think nfl teams take trevor lawrence like top three yeah just because he's a quarterback of the future like right. even it's if more he, about just like his stature like he's six five he, you know he can move and he's got a big arm yeah so his like, tools look good it's yeah. just like not he, there he needs right a now. coach he hasn't been coached properly maybe this is the year you give him another year with um peterson we'll see what happens but uh, what are we talking about? Are we starting them? Yeah, baby. I I am. You brought up the stat earlier. The Raiders are terrible against opposing That's, quarterbacks. I'm glad you remembered. Yeah. That's right. Right now. <laughs> it wasn't even a stat. <laughs> right yeah. now. Well, no. Right now, the Raiders are Felt giving like up. like an animal instinct. Right <laughs> the Raiders are giving up the most points allowed to quarterbacks in fantasy football. Okay. Number one. Yeah. T-Law got his uh, QB 16 this week. Startable, but, you know, there's guys I would rather have. I think he has a monster week for some reason. And uh, I don't I don't know why. Maybe, it's, maybe that is animal instincts. 
But, you know what's uh, weird, though? Their offense is kind of flutter, but there are a lot of guys I like in it this week. Well, let's like, just say Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. Not Zay, but, like, Kirk for sure. Etienne. Evan Ingram. Etienne's like an obvious Etienne, star. Course, yeah. He's, like, top five. Yeah. Uh, I like it. I even like Ingram this week. Really? Tight end, yeah. All right. I, I mean, I, Ingram's a guy that, like, at the tight end position, if you have him, I feel like you have to start him. He's kind of like every other tight end where it's yeah. like, oh, maybe. It's not Kelsey. Okay, wait. Listen to the last month of Ingram's game. He's good, dude. 455 touchdown. Four for 67, five for 40, six for 69. 50 yards, five catches almost every single week. If I can get six, seven, eight points out of my tight end every week, I'm stoked. Yeah, Ingram's been <laughs> fucking absolutely <laughs> stoked. stoked. <laughs> All right, uh, the Raiders, other side of the ball. Derek Carr, I mean, you, you're going to start him. He stinks, but you got to start him. I guess. Devontae Adams, obviously. Would you rather start Carr or Lawrence? I have Lawrence. I have ahead. Lawrence over him, for yeah. sure. Mm, I'd probably go Carr. Carr seems way safer. Sucker. I mean, Lawrence, uh, like, I think Lawrence has a good game, but he also, his floor is just terrible. It's so low. Yeah, but he's coming off the the tough loss against the Broncos. They're at home now. He's coming off a lot of tough losses. I was about to say, he's racking up a whole different. It's different. It's different. different. If you bet on that storyline narrative, you'd be a. be a sinking ship. Hunter Renfro. No. Has he even caught a ball this year? I'm out. Yeah, yeah, he's caught some balls. What do you mean? Has he caught a ball? He's caught a bunch of balls. This dude has 18 catches on the year. Well, he was hurt for like a couple weeks. Okay. He's been back for multiple weeks. Last week, two targets, one catch, six yards. Yeah. It's not great. (laughs) <laughs> no, you can't start him. No yeah. way. I mean, but these are the, the these are the weeks and these are the guys that like people are looking at to yeah. put in their lineup. So it's like it's very tough. I'd rather probably start Matt Collins. Well, that's what I was going to ask: Hunter Renfro or Zay Jones on the other side of the ball. They're like the same thing at this point. I know. Probably Zay Jones though. Zay Jones feels like a bigger part of that offense than Hunter Renfro to the Raiders. I would go with also Darren Waller is probably going to play, right? Uh, dude, I, I was going to bring it up, but like he, they, I feel like I see that report every week and then yeah. he doesn't play. So it's just like if he if he plays, yeah, you might as well start him if you have no other one else at tight end. I'm actually but. gonna go Renfro just because I feel like he has a higher weekly ceiling, which has not been this a thing this year at all. Hunter Renfro or Drake London? London, Tony. Um, who, uh, wait, who does Hunter Renfro Cincinnati? or Drake London? No, I was thinking about who Atlanta's playing against uh, Chargers. Chargers. Oh, right, they're playing the Chargers. Oh my God, that's just so disgusting. Yeah, dude, these uh, are the decisions people guess, have to make. I guess Renfro, Hunter Renfro, or Allen Robinson, Robinson, Cooper Cup's playing. Oh. I don't uh, know. I'm just saying. Not I'll Robinson. Go, I'll, I'll <laughs> I was going to go say Robinson. Robinson because I feel like Cup's going to miss this game. Yeah. But if he doesn't, I'm out on Robinson. Basically, anyone who has a chance of having a good game, I'm starting over Renfro. And I feel McKenzie? Like, no. Really? Uh, yeah, I would start McKenzie over Renfro. Love that. So would I. We're, we're on that together, buddy. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Hunter Renfro, that's it. Okay, Vikings at Commanders. Taylor Heineke. Nice drive at the end of the game. Other than that, mm, I feel like he's playing... Like at his peak right now, and teams are eventually going to clamp him. Yeah, I'm out on Heineke. I just, I just really think he's a, not a good player. Me too. The Vikings are all right. So you have Josh Allen, uh, not Josh Allen. You have um, who's on by this week? You have Russell Wilson on by this week. Your other quarterback options to start are PJ Walker, Sam Ellinger, and Taylor Heineke. So Russell Wilson as my QB one was just totally irrelevant. I just, I just know someone they were on by. All right, leave me alone. Okay. You got so, your quarterbacks so, on by. So you're saying Russell Wilson's on the waiver wire right now. <laughs> we can pick him up for next week. Look. I will start. I'll start Heineke there, I think. Heineke, Ellinger, or who? Ellinger. Or P.J. Walker. You could just do Ooh. Heineke or Ellinger. I don't even care. Honestly, I was kind of thinking about P.J. Heineke, Heineke or Ellinger? Uh, Not not Ellinger. Heineke, Heineke or P.J.? Fuck. Who's P.J. playing again? All these teams getting Bengals. Fucked. Bengals. Nah, nah. He, uh, Heineke's safer, so I guess I got to just go with that. I just don't want, like, a, a four spot for my quarterback, and I feel like P.J. has the better chance of doing that. He, Heineke, I don't think, is going to do that to me. But I just think his ceiling is not yeah. there. Last one, Heineke or Zach Wilson. Oh, Heineke. Bye, Zach Wilson. Not doing that. You got to do Heineke. Good yeah. The running backs for the commanders, Antonio Gibson and Brian Robinson. I'll start Gibson there. He's been super involved in the passing game. Yes. I love Gibson. He's been kind of nice the last few weeks for sure. He's been very underrated. They finally like put him in the role that he. I feel like he should have been the whole time. It's like, let him be an athlete. Stop forcing him carries up the middle. Yes. Well, they needed Brian Robinson to do that. To make that shift. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm saying they're... Now I they've mean, done it. You yeah. start both of them if you have both of them? I don't think you start Robinson. Really? Vice, Vice Rundy is good, yeah. Ro- Robinson's been like a pile of dust since he's come back. Yeah. Like the, that. the story was fun for a minute, but like mm-hmm. he hasn't been good. No, he has not been good at all. All right, Curtis Samuel. I don't even know. What do you say about this guy? I like, know. What, what kind of analysis can you give other than like he's fun, he gets has some good weeks, but like you never fucking know what's happening with well, him. Well, I feel like since Wentz got benched... It's so all did, Terry. Yeah. It's all So Terry. did Samuel in your fantasy lineup. Yeah. Everything is going, the, the target share to Terry is like fucking 27%. Everything's going to Terry. All right. Uh, 
feeling? Uh, I'd rather not. Yeah. But I'd rather not, but he's probably a top, like, 28 option for me. So I'll, I'll, I'll play him this week. Yeah, he's he's fine. If Hawkinson plays this week, do you start him? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah He's yeah. on the list. I would for sure start him. I have, um, I was going to ask you, okay, Thielen or Dobbs? I'm going to go Dobbs. I'm going to go Dobbs, too. Thielen or Kirk? Christian Kirk? Yeah. Kirk. I still think I'm yeah. maybe I'm, yeah, like, yeah, unnecessarily yeah. high on Kirk still. I feel I, like I still have that, like, He's had those three month. good weeks, and he sucked ever yeah. since. Yeah. D- but Raiders, I still take Kirk, though. Just terrible. All right, last one. Thielen or Rondell Moore? Thielen. I don't trust Rondell Moore at all. <sighs> his, his weekly floor feels really fucking low, but I, I guess so is Thielen's. Oof, they're so close in my rankings. Seattle's defense is not as bad as I originally thought they were. Uh, no, the Seattle's and, team is just like they're they're coming together, man. They're playing good football. Yeah, and I mean, last time the Seahawks faced the Cardinals like three weeks ago or something, it was like a 9-20 to 20 game, 19-9 to 9 or something like that. So not necess- that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to they're going to repeat, but... I'm going to go with Thielen. Yeah. Cool. That game. Done. Rams. Bucks. Not a lot going on here, Two honestly. Two broken-ass teams. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like Outside from the obvious guys, Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, you're going to start them. What about Julio Jones, if you have to? Who do, no. you, who do you start between those two? Is it... We just say... It's Evans. Really? It's Evans for you me. You think Evans doesn't just see Jalen Ramsey the whole game, though? It feels like that happens, and it's a Godwin game. Yeah, oh, you mean just specifically for this week or just like every week? No, 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 for this week. For this week? Talking about Jalen Ramsey. I don't even, does he even shadow him? I think so. It feels like Evans always gets the shadow coverage and then he gets like... He still does great. <sighs> I don't know. I feel like he has he has the touchdown upside, Evans. Yeah. God, Godwin definitely gets the yard advantage. Like he may get the more targets than the yards, but Evans gets that, that one deep shot. He gets the red zone looks. Yeah. I mean, you're starting both of them, of course, but yeah. who knows? I feel it's like it's so one. hard to predict what corners are going to do in a game-to-game basis, being exactly. like, oh, he's going to shadow him to where you, ju- you just play both of them. Honestly, Jalen Ramsey this year, him and Aaron Donald, they don't do shit. The feel, running back feels dramatic. The running yeah, back probably. position for the Rams is a complete disaster right now. Uh, Darrell Henderson, basically, is he in the doghouse? What happened? I don't even know. You're not starting anyone there. Ronnie Rivers? No. no. You're not going to start Ronnie Rivers? I'll let the Rams start Ronnie Rivers, not my fantasy there, team. There's, like, no running back on either side of this so team. That that, these are all dependent upon if Cooper Cup plays or not, but Cooper Cup does not play. Are you starting Van Jefferson? No. No. You're starting Ben Skoranek? Yes. Yes, you are. I like me some yes, Ben Yes, you Skoranek. are. I like him over A-Rob. Dude, me too. I, I really like Higby. Higby's going to be great. Higby's a must-star. I mean, if I'm Cooper Cup's yeah. yeah. He's a must-star if Cooper Cup plays or not. Higby's going to have, like, 25 receptions. Yeah. Mm. For fucking 45 yards. <laughs> All right, before we get to this game, let's head over to my man Nick for a little helmet. He's going to head over to me, and I'm going to head over to Pristine Auction because they are giving away this beautiful, signed, Stefan Diggs Buffalo Bills helmet. Ike's going to put some beautiful B-roll up there so you can get a closer look at it. But you can enter the giveaway absolutely free if you go over to pristineauction.com. And you use BDGE when you sign up. You don't have to deposit any money down on the platform. You're automatically entered into this free giveaway that also will put $10 free of charge towards your first auction, towards your first bid. They've got helmets. They've got bats. They've got gloves. They've got balls. They've got anything that you'd want a piece of sports memorabilia for signed by your favorite players. And since it's auctions and you're not actually buying it at retail price, you're getting it for a very, very cheap price on pristine auction. Go hit it up. Link will be in the description. Just sign up. Use code BDGE. You're signed up for a free giveaway. You're signed up for $10 towards your first purchase on the platform. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So thank you, pristine auction. And thank you all for signing up. Pristine Auction actually has, like, dangerously low prices. I've bought a lot of things on accident. just because. Accident. Yeah, just because I, I'll, like, put a bid in. Like, I saw a, a Shaq jersey, and it was, like, 50 bucks. And I was like, oh, 50 bucks. So, like, I'll put it in. And then I got it. And I was like, hold up. I don't have 50 bucks. <laughs> 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 they, the, the prices are so low, they just assume that, like, a 17-year-old kid has that type of money. You love to see it. All right, head over to Pristine Auction. Thank you all. Okay, next game, Dolphins at Bears. Justin Fields, game. we talked about earlier. I think we, you know, we're maybe not in a QB1 league, but obviously for Superflex. QB1 league, you starting Justin Fields over? I yeah. got him as QB10 this week. I really? Would, definitely. Mm-hmm. I've got Tua. I, we'll talk about him in a second, but he's up at QB5. I love Tua. Justin Fields or Tom Brady? Justin Fields. Fields. Easily. Justin Fields or Geno Smith? Fields. They're 10 and 11 for me. I got Fields higher, though. I feel like Geno, as as good as he's been for the Seahawks, hasn't been, like, that great for fantasy. Again, I know he's, like, he went off against the Lions, and he went off against another terrible defense earlier in the year. But, like, he consistently only throws for, like, 190, 200 yards. Touchdowns, though. Yeah, but, I mean, Justin Fields has a way better chance of, like, rushing one in. For sure. For sure. There, He's definitely got a higher ceiling. Yeah, Geno Smith had, like, a fat little middle part of the season where he 
ripped off. He's come back down a, a few big games, yeah. But like you said, he's been he's living between 190 and 210. But he has been throwing a couple touchdowns yeah. a game. He's been adding some rushing yardage, 26, 48, 49 every other week or so. So, I mean, it's there. They're, I think they're both really good plays. They're both QB1s yeah. this week. Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence. Justin Fields. Fields. Even with the Raiders being the number one against? I mean, Dolphins defense hasn't looked good either. And Dolphins, I know, are going to score against Dolphins the Bears. just traded for Bradley Chubb, just remember, not to. It's, it's good for the pass rush. They're secondary, yeah. Their D-backs have yeah. been yeah. atrocious. Yeah. I'm, I'm, we're in on Fields this week. I, I think there's going to be so many points that game. Big on the over, not that has to do with fantasy much, but just everyone scoring in that game. All right. The running backs for the Bears. Uh, David Montgomery. I would start him. I mean, yeah, I feel like you have to, but it's just one of those things. Do you, you don't feel great about it because Kula Herbert's there too. Do you start him? Yeah, I, have I, I think they're both starting over Montgomery. Do you? Yeah, he finally out touched him last week, and he's been out producing him weekly. I would start both of them. They're both like top twenty four options, but really hard to say what happens. I here. was a little surprised that David Montgomery didn't uh, get traded. Like he would have been a running back that would have been uh, on the trade block for sure. I just do they even have a third running back on that depth chart? Like on that team? Like what? Tristan happened? Ebner. Ebner. Yeah, he's yeah. a beast. Okay, isn't he like five eight? 5'8 beast. <laughs> um, I'll start both of them. Won't be fun, but I like Herbert more than Montgomery straight up. Straight All up. Right. And then what about Claypool if he plays? Assuming he does. He's not going to be in my lineup week one. Yeah. Even yeah if I, he I, hits, I'll, I'll, I'll live with it. Yeah. You just got to wait and see. All right. Uh, Dolphins, two. Everyone's starting. Yeah. Probably a quarterback one. Uh, hold Mostert. up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, yeah. you had something to say? Well, no. No, I mean, you for sure start it to a hill waddle, but or you were going to talk about the running backs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Jeff Wilson might be expected to play this week. Yeah, so Mostert, Wilson, what do you do? Uh, you you can you definitely play Mostert. Wilson, I think, is also a good player. You hear they picked him up on the PJ? They just, they just took the private jet, went and picked up Jeff Wilson, stopped in Denver, and picked up Bradley Chubb. Really? Yeah. Pretty badass. Yeah, that is dope. That's a cool story, yeah. Don't Jeff know Wilson? Don't know if it's true. <laughs> Wait, you just made that no, up? No, 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 no. I, I saw it on the, it was like a Twitter report, and I was like, that's fucking baller. It's like a backup running back. You're just going to pick him up on the PJ. <laughs> Dude, the, the Shanahan, like, tree they love loves him. Jeff Wilson. Yeah. They'll do anything for that guy. Yeah. And I, I think, similar to Shanahan, it, Kyle Shanahan always tried to mix in other backs with Mostert. I don't, he, it never felt like he wanted Mostert to be like the bell cow. It just, like, never really worked out to where either Moser got hurt or other guys on the roster got hurt to where Moser became a necessity. But this feels like um, I'm definitely starting Moser. Chicago Bears run defense is bad, and they've just right. got rid of like more players off their defense. Moser, you start for sure. Wilson's a dude that you are going to hear reports leading all the way up to the game where like, oh, he'll be active, but he's going to be on a super limited snap count. Or they're going to be like, now he's going to let him rip and like be the RB2. If you get the positive reports, I think you just follow that energy there. Yeah, 100%. If they let him, yeah, if they let him rip, then I think you yeah, can put both those to, guys. like compare any guys to him right now, but Jeff Wilson or Rashad White? Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Yeah. Definitely. All right, one more. Jeff Wilson or Isaiah Pacheco? <laughs> Definitely Wilson. Pacheco? Pacheco, he's the starter kind of. No, uh, that, that means nothing. I'm, uh, you know what? I'm really intrigued to see what happens coming off the bye because they named him the starter right before the bye. Clyde ends up, you know, getting in the end zone, but was terrible. <laughs> Got more touches than him too, didn't he? Uh, I don't know how the touch count ended out, but I feel like that game where he was announced to start, he only got like eight touches. Yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking though, like that was the direction they wanted to go in, like him being the starter. So after the bye, like I, I, I feel like there's a chance that he comes out and he gets more. He like actually owns the backfield. Either way, though, they're 12 and a half point favorites against the Titans. There's a chance that, like, all their running backs just get, like, 12 to 15 touches this yeah, week. Yeah, that, that's definitely fair. I, again, though, it goes back to, like, the reports for Wilson. If they let him play, I'd probably play Wilson over him, though. All right, cool. Yeah, it's going to be a tricky one, everyone. Uh, good luck if you have Jeff Wilson. I don't know what the <laughs> hell you should do. Packers at Lions. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, we're starting Aaron Rodgers. Don't no. feel good about it somehow. I, I, I don't feel. All. This is, like, the one week I, I actually feel good at starting Against Aaron the Lions. Rodgers. I feel actually, like, right. like every, QB 12, I everybody like. does yeah. well against the Lions. <laughs> yeah. And we're talking about Aaron Rodgers. Historically, still talented. he's still he, he's done well against the Lions too. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like if if there was ever a time to get right, it's against the Lions. There's one problem though. Who the fuck is he throwing the ball to? Is Lazard starting, starting this them? week? I don't know. The sleeper hasn't projected for like 11 points, and I'm like, wait, I feel like he's not playing. I think he's going to end up playing. I think he's projecting towards playing. But I mean, like, you play Dobbs. Yeah. Uh, if Lazard plays, I guess you play him too. I think Robert Tunyon might be a nice streaming play. He's Maybe. probably, like, chilling on your waiver wire. Maybe. I, he could be also be 70% owned. I have no idea. But he probably finds the end zone. Yeah, I could see that. I, I, Tunyon's a guy that I'd, I, I feel like he's quietly been having some good games. Uh, He's getting targets. Uh, the problem is like, everyone, is, everyone stinks right now. Like, not offense. really. No. All right, so Tunyon, guess how many touchdowns Tunyon has on the year? Three. Two. One. One. It was, like, five weeks ago. Yep. He has one touchdown. 
Uh, he had a, he guess had a touchdown many, called back last week. Yeah, Not that guess how many games uh, over 40 receiving yards he's had this year? Two. None. One. So he has one touchdown and one game over 40 receiving yards. <laughs> Shit. Sucks. Yeah, but he's had like he had like a, a a few weeks ago against the Jets. He went twelve targets, ten catches, ninety yards, and he had a touchdown like two weeks before that. So those so are when one he of those hits. He hits. It's, yeah, it, it's really hard to keep track of. There's a whole tier of the Evan Ingrams, the Robert Tunyons, the Hayden Hursts, the what the Tyler Conklins that just have like monster weeks, and then you just are like, oh, they're a good streaming option. You don't hear about them for like four weeks at a time, and then when you need to get a tight end, you're like, oh, he's kind of good, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's like not no. really at all. Robert Tunyon or uh, Tyler Conklin. Tunyon. See, the Conklin the, feels like the guy you should no. say because he's coming off the one good week, but, like, do you trust that? No. No. I think against, you, against the Bills? Yeah, no, Tunyon. Zero for trust. Too. Robert Tunyon or Dawson Knox? Like, Dawson Knox yeah. is the better player, but he's not the Yeah, I feel like Dawson's Dawson's played Knox in the league last week. better? <sighs> I'm just going to go with Knox because Josh Allen. Right. Isaiah Likely. I mean, that all depends on Andrews. Or Robert Tunyon. Andrews doesn't play. Oh, Likely. Yeah, yeah Likely's, Likely's like, like a top five. Top five yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. Jared Goff. I like him this week. Me too. Jared Goff at home, definitely a usable quarterback in fantasy. The road's a little bit different. Also, Green Bay, they don't really have much of a pass rush or defense in general. So I don't think Jared Goff's going to be under much pressure. I really like him this week. I like Goff too. Top 15 for me. All right, so here's where it gets tricky with this game because the running backs are... uh, Obviously, we're not worried about uh, Dylan and well uh, Jones. Well, maybe Dylan. I'm I'm not playing Dylan. You're not playing Dylan? No. I would play him. I j- he does worry it's me. It's tough though. to say with the bye weeks because I just don't know who people have. But like, I mean, if you don't have to, yeah, I could see that. But I think I don't trust him at all. I mean, you're probably comparing him to other guys with like worse matchups who have similar opportunities. He's been really bad this year. Like, yeah. ho- like almost horrifically bad. Outside of okay, AJ Dillon or Brian Robinson. AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon or Eno Benjamin. I'm, let me just let me just rip this real quick. This stat. <laughs> All right. So week one, he had the big game. He had like seventeen and a half fantasy points. Since week one, he hasn't had a single game of nine half PPR fantasy points. It's been terrible. Like really terrible. Like I don't know how Dylan is startable. Well, he's playing against the Lions. That's how he's somewhat startable. Yeah, I feel like this might be just like a hundred and forty yard game from Aaron Jones. Clyde Edwards Hilaire or AJ Dylan. Oh God damn. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Clyde. That's just a Chiefs Mahomes thing. Yeah, and like you said, they should be up a lot against the Titans, who might be starting Malik Willis. Um, I'm looking at my rankings, and like after twenty, like after top twenty, it's so bad. Ugly. I have so Dil- ugly. I actually have Dylan as RB twenty two, but every player after him is so bad. Yeah, I guess I got to go with Clyde. Just like reading back the stat I just ripped off with Dylan, I, I just don't know how you put him in the lineup. Do you guys ever consider this when you're going back and forth between two players, just taking the guy who's on prime time, uh, is that is really. that ever a tiebreaker for you? Like no. in this situation, I truly cannot. I don't think I could pick between Dylan and and Clyde. Maybe there's some difference where it's like, oh, I'm going for upside, going for safe floor. A lot of times, I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it, save it for Monday night. I haven't, but I think I might start using that going forward. I I honestly <laughs> so I don't really do have because I don't care about anything. <laughs> yeah, it's like you know what? I I just want my guy to go second, so I know how many points he needs to score, rather than like go first and just try to get as many as possible. Well, I almost look at it the other way. I'd almost rather not have my guy in prime time because if like Monday rolls around and my matchup is done, I don't feel forced to stay up until fucking midnight watching this game. And I feel like I am if I have players going. I see that, but then also I just I just don't want my hope to die. So quick on Sunday, you know? That's fair. Um, yeah, no, I've never used that. It's not a great strategy, but I <laughs> use it. All right, the Lions running backs. Uh, DeAndre Swift, even if he starts, I don't really know if I feel great about starting him. I'm, I'm kind of out on Swift this week. Yeah, Man. I feel like Jamal Williams is still the guy there, even if, like, when, if even if Swift is playing and gets him down to the 5'10 yard line, like, Jamal Williams is coming in. Yeah. He's going to get the touchdowns. I feel great about Jamal Williams, but if Swift's active, I would also feel good about him. Probably catches a lot of passes. Uh, Amara St. Brown, we're all good with. Yep. Uh, yeah. Josh Five Randall. One. If you got to start him, mm, what do you think? Nah, I, I I do think there's probably a second receiving weapon that's going to do well this week. But is it Raymond? Is it um, Josh Reynolds or McCole Hardman? Me, Cole. I'm out on every Lions player except for Williams and Amon Ra. Yeah, basically. I like n- none of them are touching my lineup. Seahawks and Cardinals. Lock at DK Goodwin. Starting all of them. Maybe not Goodwin. Definitely not Goodwin. Definitely not Goodwin. Yeah. No. Cardinals actually have a um, pretty good pass uh, defense. They have a good run defense, I think it is. I thought it was pass defense. I think it's the other way around. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? <laughs> I think it was the run defense. I, I could also be wrong, but you know what it is? They definitely have one. No, and I'm not going to look it up because in my mind, it's just a nice... 
amazing matchup for my guys. And I'm like, they play Arizona, they're in my lineup. Don't tell me otherwise. There's definitely one side of the defense that they're be- like way better at. All right, let me figure it out before we keep going on like fucking more. I want to say it's run defense. I want to say it's pass. I, I think I heard it from someone, and I was like, fuck, I got Kenneth Walker. Oof. Cardinals give up fifth most points to QB, so it's probably not. Yeah, the it's defense. probably the run defense. Probably not the pass D. Uh, I mean, fantasy points allowed to running backs are like dead middle. Fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, they are nineteen. Like also kind of middle. <laughs> okay. Oh, so to, the, to, to quarterbacks, they're fifth. Yeah. But that I guess that means either they're letting up a lot to tight ends or yeah, second most points to tight ends. And probably some rushing stuff there. So QBs, QBs are good to go versus the Cardinals. I mean, I think they're middle of the pack defense regardless. I don't think there's yeah. like a team that you need to really be shying away from. Yeah, I mean, was, so Gino is. I think like I love Gino now for fantasy. I think he's been he's been balling. So I'm starting Gino. Uh, the running backs though is where I'm a little and and the uh, wide receiver here, Rondell Moore, very startable for me. Uh, coming off a big game, like obviously D hops the alpha there, but they're, I, I think they're using him the way that both these guys should be used. Like Rondell's in the slot now, D hops fucking mossing people on the outside so i feel good about those two guys i feel good about zach Ertz too yeah real good uh the Love running back Ertz. situation james connor is back in, at practice in a limited fashion yes so that that kind of fucks things up a little bit uh i don't really know what i'd want to do at running back if he's active if you were starting you know benjamin for the past two weeks are you going to still start him now if james connor's connor back no. active probably not i think he's like playable as a flex but you, you got to be down pretty bad to do that. Michael Carter or Eno Benjamin? Carter. If James Conner plays. If James Conner plays. Yeah, probably lean Carter. They, they just show so much allegiance to James Conner. Like, if he's on the field, they're giving him too many touches, no matter what. It's like David Montgomery in Arizona. Mm-hmm. All right, Darrell Henderson or Eno Benjamin? Uh, Not uh, shit. I'd go Eno there. Yeah, yeah, I probably would too. There's, uh, there's n- just zero upside in the Rams rushing game. I feel like best case scenario is like 12 or 31 in a touchdown. Yeah, I, I feel like they can't even run the ball on a bad run defense. Yeah, yeah. The, the running back situation there is really tough. I don't trust either. I don't trust Connor if he's playing. I don't trust Eno if Connor's playing. I only trust Eno if Connor's not playing. Yeah. Damn. Eno needs the backfield like to himself completely. Yeah, exactly. All right, Titans at Chiefs. Uh, what do you do with Tannehill? Is he playing? Are you starting him if he does? I don't think there's a high chance he plays in this game. I mean, he's dealing with a high ankle sprain. Normally, that feels like a three- to four-week injury, and we're only on week two. Different for quarterbacks. Dude, this he hurt the leg. He <laughs> has to push off and throw the ball on. Dude. Suck en- it up. Enough with your science. Ice it. It's wrong. Like ice, ice it. it Tordal, like this is, it's, it's not the ankle you want to sprain. If you're a, if you're a right-handed, quarterback. I mean, but Tannehill's yeah, let's be real here though. Him. Either way, like, nah, Tannehill's been kind of fucking cheeks regardless. Yeah, like, he hasn't been good either, even but, if he is playing. And he's not even healthy. You, you play Derrick Henry and you move on from the Titans. That's it. The, yes, the Chiefs are giving up the second most points to fantasy quarterbacks. Don't care. Tannehill does not get in my lineup. No. All right, what about Willis? Nope. No. Did you see him last week? I did. He did not look good at all. Derrick yeah. Henry was missing practices though, wasn't he? He's, he's fine. just getting he's better. Rest. Okay. He's fine. Don't worry about him. Uh, the Titans uh, wide receivers no, and the Chiefs wide no. receivers here. Obviously, the Titans know. Chiefs, who do you start? Juju? You play Juju. Yeah. You play Juju. Um, who is it? Miko? Not MBS. really MVS. Both of them are this in the same tier for me of guys that, like, you're kind of just like, fuck. You know, it's either a three-point guy or I want to take my upside with either of them. I'm fine with both of them as, as like, second flex options if you need them. Yeah. I, I won't start either of them. All right. Let's rank these flex. Let's rank these players, these four guys right now, for flex, right? Clyde, Pacheco. MVS, Mikol. I'm still going Clyde number one. Checo number two. Yeah. MVS, Mikol. I think that's the way I do it too. I might move Mikol to three. Number one. <laughs> Mikol number over one, everybody. Baby. No, I think, well, McCoy, he had two touchdowns last week, right? Obviously, it's all fluky, or at the bye, and then he had two touchdowns before that. He gets involved in the run game. He gets those those little end arounds and stuff. It, like, MVS isn't going to get that. So, like, I think, I'm just looking at, yeah. I was, yeah, I was, Mikol's I was, I was coming off a big game. Actually, him and MVS are both coming off big games, but, like, there's just, there's nothing solid before those games. Yeah, Everything is, sustainable. like, like Mikol has, like, games of two yards this year, four yards, 16 yards. Like, it's bad. Definitely putting the running backs above him. Yeah, I'd go, I'd go with the running backs. This is the way you ordered them, MVS, then Mikol. Yeah. All right, last game, Monday Night Football. Ravens at the Saints. Ravens are a dead team right now. Uh, look, they got some life back on defense. Dead so. team, five and three. Yeah. Three and one on I, the road. I just meant like Bateman and Andrews and all the running backs are hurt. Yeah, obviously if Bateman doesn't, uh, I mean, Bateman's not playing. Obviously if Andrews doesn't play, uh, we all love Isaiah Likely. Yes. I'm going to say uh, I think Likely might be a good play. I think they saw enough out of him that they're like, he's probably our best 
best pass catching option outside of Andrews and probably Bateman. Yes. I, I, I would imagine they go a lot of two tight end sets going forward. I agree. Plus, isn't Andrews a guy that only plays like sixty percent of snaps anyway? Is that still th- I know uh, that was the last still a thing? thing. I feel like it's always a thing. Yeah, no, I I, don't, diabetes. I wouldn't read into that too much. But yeah, I feel like likely he's gonna be on the field a lot. Duvernay is a guy I'd be okay playing this week. I think I have to play him in a in a league or two. What do you do with the running backs, Drake and Edwards? Is it I thought Edwards wasn't gonna play. He's been day to day. I think the only way you play a running back here is probably if Gus Edward gets ruled out, you can play Drake as a yes. flex. Probably if the only way to go. I mean, if he's in though, probably. If he's in, start. I still feel like he's probably a little bit limited, and it's been so tough to like nail this backfield on the head. And Saints are a pretty tough run defense. I just Gus, I feel like might be in for like a twelve or fifty game or something like that. Doesn't get involved in the pass catching work. They're both like borderline top thirty options at running back, which is not good. All right, so if your league allows Taysom Hill to be started at the tight end position, is he a must start every week, no matter what? Uh not definitely not a must start. I mean, he's been nice, but like. He's not consistent. No, enough. definitely not he's consistent. He's not getting used as the quarterback as much as he was earlier, but he still has that upside of like, yeah, his just upside is and throw the a number one touchdown. fantasy player of the week. It's yeah. crazy. But it, and the tight end position has been very, you know, tough to, you know, there's really only like six or seven guys that you can actually start every week. I'm like trying to look at his stat lines to see all over what place. he does. He'll, he'll get like three carries one game. He'll get a catch for a touchdown. He's got six total touchdowns on the yeah. year. Like the guy yeah. scores every other week, if not more than that. So I I think he's a fine, he, I think he's like my tight end 10 or 11. I don't think he's a must start. That's definitely not a must start, but like. I think he's a must, like if you don't have a Kelsey or a, even like an Andrews, like who else right, well, is like a must start? Hold on, hold end? on. Think about this. Like Kelsey Andrews, Goddard, you're playing over Hill. Yeah. Zach Ertz, I think you're playing over Hill. Gerald Everett now with all the receivers out. Okay, Higby. Five. I'd play Higby, Higby over Hill. Hawkinson. No. I would play Hawkinson over Oh, Hill. actually I have Hawkinson ranked one spot over Hill. Um I would do it. Kyle Pitts, I'm playing over mm-hmm. Taysom Hill, I think. I actually might go <laughs> Taysom Hill <laughs> over Kyle Pitts. <laughs> I, I just think both their floors are zero, so I might as well go with the guy who can score 30, and it's not Kyle Taysom Pitts. Hill probably touches the ball more than Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Does. Dude, we're first in our division. Kyle Pitts. Oh, that threw you. That threw you Kyle's for a fucking No, thing. it's Irrelevant. just like, I, it's so sad how much I dislike Kyle Pitts. Yeah. I might throw Evan Ingram in over Hill. Evan Ingram over Kyle Pitts, yeah. Olave, we like? Oh, 100%. We love. Yeah. Is there anyone else that you would start from the Saints? No. Obviously, you know, like, got Kamara, Kamara yeah. but like. That's it. Nope. What about uh, is Juwan Johnson? Nope. Actually, a startable tight end. Juwan Johnson's a little bit nice, but he he's like another one of those guys who needs like everyone out and like he'll yeah. produce. You need to predict what, which the week it is. Yeah, yeah, be, exactly. I'd rather I'd week. rather go with Isaiah likely than than yeah. Johnson. Yeah, both those guys probably available. All right, um, I believe that is it. We have no more games to go through. We went through every single game for you. We told you a bunch of players to start and sit, and hopefully uh, Nick gave you good analysis. <laughs> all right, that's all we got. Make sure you uh, hit the thumbs up, like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Talk some shit in the comments. Flex on, Flex somebody. on us. Flex somebody on somebody in, in public. On this weekend. Uh, Let us know who has the biggest traps of them all. Hit a child in the face. And see you later. Bye.